um, you know, there are many varieties of uh, load balancers uh, that are out there. You know, some of them are open source, some of them are closed source, uh, some of them are virtual, and some of them have physical hardware like FI, Avi, Cisco, and you know, th there are many other companies. And some of the po most popular, uh, you know, uh, software load balancers are HA Proxy and Nginx. There are, from from a networking perspective, there are like uh, two major types of load balancers. You know, you will often hear this word L4 or, you know, layer four and also layer seven. Um, it's also called application load balancer. You know, what exactly does it mean, right? You know, before we can answer that, let's just quickly take a look at um, a networking packet. So let's say if I see this picture from the top, on the right side, I see there is a user data, which is uh, on a computer. Let's say you have, you're trying to access a website or you're trying to send an email, things like that. You know, when you um, access a website, the, the traffic or that, that data is sent down into the computer's uh, software kernel and it, uh, and it goes through this uh, chain of uh, layers where each layer keeps adding more information to the user data. Now, the, the, the topmost layer, it's called the application layer or layer seven. And the next layer below that, it's called a transport layer. So in, uh, or layer four. At layer four, generally we are talking about these two popular protocols called TCP and UDP. And below that we have IP and ethernet and you have the actual uh, physical devices, you know, how you transmit the data, is it wireless or ethernet, optical, whatever. So Layer two uh, deals with, you know, where, uh, how do I send the packet from one node to another and uh, on a, on, in, in a particular local area network or in a LAN. And then you have this IP, uh, which is responsible for sending packets across different networks. And the layer four is responsible for delivering the packets on a particular device on various uh, port numbers or various uh, protocols and you know, finally the application data. So when you hear layer four, what it means is these load balancers are inspecting the network traffic at the layer four or until layer four. That means they can read all the information all the way up to the TCP slash UDP headers. A layer four load balancer cannot look into your application data. Now, in case of a layer seven, it's even more intelligent. It can inspect your application data. And when you hear layer seven app load balancer, generally we are talking about either HTTP or HTTPS. So, you know, let's say you have a website traffic, you know, it's HTTP traffic. So a layer seven load balancer can inspect that data and it can make intelligent, intelligent decisions uh, based on the content which is there in this packet. So that's the different load balancer types from a networking perspective. Um, here is an example of, uh, you know, the two type of uh, load balancers in uh, AWS. You know, you have the app load balancer, which is layer seven, which is on the left hand side. And then you have the network load balancer, which is uh, layer four. Cool. So now uh, let's uh, talk about how um, you know load balancing happens in Kubernetes, why we need it, and things like that. All right. So here in this picture, um, I am trying to um, show the different nodes of a Kubernetes cluster. And when you have a Kubernetes cluster, there are like many parts running in it, uh, a lot of system services, and one of the interesting part that I want to talk about is the DNS part. So a DNS part running on a Kubernetes cluster is responsible for service discovery within the cluster. So let's say you have these uh, different application parts which are running and they want to discover other services. You Let's say you have app one or app two. So app one can talk to app two by just using app one name. So the, the name resolution is done by the DNS part. You know, as, as the load, of your apps as the 
number of pods on your cluster increases, you know, you have the same kind of problem that we saw earlier, where your single DNS pod is not able to handle all the uh, DNS requests that are coming in. So what you do is you scale up your DNS uh, pods and you distribute your load across that. So how, how we do that is using a Kubernetes concept called cluster IP. So this is one of the uh, native load balancer concepts which are available in Kubernetes. So a cluster IP does help with load distribution and it also helps with version upgrades. And uh, from the networking perspective, a cluster IP can function only up to layer four, which means it can inspect network traffic only up to TCP or UDP headers. It is internal to the cluster. What I mean by that is this particular type of load balancer is available for use within the cluster itself. Nothing outside the cluster can access this cluster IP. So how, we, uh, how do we configure this cluster IP? Using a Kubernetes service. It's a kind of, a, it's a kind or it's a type of a Kubernetes uh, service. Um, this uh, LB also provides, uh, you know, service discovery using the name of the service. And the interesting thing is there are no network interfaces associated with uh, the cluster IP, unlike the other IP addresses that we generally see. So uh, when a Kubernetes uh, cluster is brought up, we have this uh, component called Kube API server. So one of the arguments that you can pass to this uh, Kube API server is the cluster IP range. You know, you pass a subnet to this uh, using this argument to the kube api server so when you create a cluster ip in your kubernetes cluster the ip address is uh, randomly picked from this particular subnet and uh, i have few interesting uh, notes here you know if if you are trying to expose your application uh, inside a kubernetes cluster you know always use a cluster ip please do not rely on pod ip addresses because pods and their IP addresses are ephemeral. What it means is like, let's say you have uh, a, a simple web application running in Kubernetes cluster, and there is another downstream application which is relying upon this uh, web app, which is a microservice. If you use uh, the pod IP, what, you know, let's say the pod dies and the pod is recreated on a different node with a different IP address, then how is the downstream app going to uh, 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 work, you know, it's going to have a downtime. So please do not use pod IP addresses. Always use a cluster IP if you are trying to expose your application within the Kubernetes cluster. 